So in the series, what is fine art photography? We're continuing on uh, based on 10 questions that I've kind of received during my kind of fine art workshops during the past kind of, you know, five, 10 years, whatever. Uh, but some interesting one, I, I could have chosen out of a hundred to be honest, but uh, again, I've just kind of picked out what I feel are kind of 10 really good questions to actually kind of follow this through. So uh, one at a time. Um, what initially drew you to fine art photography as a means of creative expression? As I mentioned in the previous film, um, I kind of got into, I think, the more creative fine art with my vision of going to art college originally, my photography being too dominant, being kind of allowed to go and do uh, the likes of um, life drawing. Uh, and that kind of really then took me down a kind of a realm of mixing photography and kind of the painting and the drawing kind of thing together. Um, initially, when kind of finishing my exams, then uh, waiting for the exam results with a place in um, uh, kind of Howard Gardens, uh, which was the art school in Cardiff. Um, but I kind of went to work for a photographer in that short term and basically I never left. But what I found that even though I was absolutely loving what I was doing, um, I kind of really needed um, some kind of my own kind of basics. And, and I was lucky, my, my, my sister was in with a group of uh, kind of models at the time. Uh, Benetton, the year before, had launched. That was a fashion uh, brand and they were a franchise or some kind of thing within UK. The uh, fashion shows that they did to launch, I was, I was lucky enough to actually be asked to do some photography there. Um, a lot of the models kind of saw the kind of thing that I was doing, that I did some kind of model work for them and everything else with it. And in fact, one of uh, those um, women then, um, girls, um, asked if I could shoot a portfolio for her and we were shooting swimwear and laundry and everything else with it. And during that session, in fact, um, she kind of asked me if I would be prepared to do some nude. And basically, I had to have a clue. I didn't know what I was doing. But of course, then I had to lean back onto life drawing. And you kind of think this yin and the yang, how kind of if I hadn't done the one thing, I would have actually feared another. And that that's where I got my inspiration. And, and kind of then I began to actually research in through books, magazines, as far as, you know, practical photographer, amateur photographer, professional photographer, um, and, and just goes from there. But I was lucky enough that my sister, um, youngest one, she'd actually bought me a book for my 18th called The Dark Summer uh, by Bob Collis Clark. And basically that's where I leaned on. So as far as what initially drew me into the fine art photography, it was a creative um, push for me while I was kind of working for a photographer. Yes, I was having to do kind of weddings and portraiture for myself on the side because my wages were so bad. In fact, I be began a little business with accounts as well by the, the time I was 20. Um, but as far as the kind of the creative angle, I've got to say that thanks to my sister and her model friends and this one uh, model specifically, that kind of took me down the kind of the real expression I also really love dance and I, I can't dance, all right, but I really love movement and motion and kind of everything that the body does and, and kind of that, capturing that, the likes of Degas, um, uh, ballerinas on stage kind of being painted from the wings, as it were. I, I kind of really love that element. So it's kind of mixing the art and the dominant in me, which was the photographer, and without a doubt, the photographer would definitely be my strength, not so much the art. I was much more into ab abstract rather than fine painting. So one had the the kind of the one quality where the other one didn't and things really. And that's how I got involved in the kind of fine art beginnings, as it were. Question two, uh, can you describe the creative process from the initial concept to the finished photograph? Ah, oh, yes and no. Um, Definitely, uh, it's got to start with an idea. And the great thing about where we are in the world today to do with Pinterest and Google and books and everything around around you, including you, a uh, YouTube, um, you you can't help but get inspired in some way. For me, I kind of lent on um, basically probably art as the beginning. So something has inspired me like Mandy Warhol or kind of um, 
Sam Haskins uh, are kind of th those are where I kind of get the initial kind of ideas, let's say. And then during the course of the past decades of obviously, whereas you were once being led by somebody else's inspiration to feed you, you kind of come up with ideas. But it, it's just scribbling down the idea then, making a note on my phone. Uh, thank, thank goodness for the smart devices as phones, as it were and then kind of working my way through the ideas. And if I've got a mental block, um, I'll definitely still hit the Google or a Pinterest and go, okay, just give me some idea to work from to begin with. A, a bit like, uh, I suppose, a chef and ingredients with food. You know, you need to start at the kind of the basic element and then add more and more of a certain spice or spices in to kind of change it. Um, as far as the... The, the kind of the idea, finding um, somebody to kind of follow through the creative idea with it. So if we were kind of working in a studio environment with real clients and it was just a family por a portrait, for instance, I would always encourage myself and my photographers to work for me in that last 20 minutes of a shoot to be a little bit more creative than the first part of the shoot. And that is exactly the same, I would say, in the creative process for me in the fine art is that I'll go in, I'll book a, a model, or if I've managed to find a muse, a muse would be somebody that we've agreed that I'm going to shoot kind of during the likes of a year or whatever it is, whether it's for a monetary pay a payment or not, that's really down to them. Um, but then kind of I'll pitch them the ideas of this is what I'd really like, like to do. And kind of uh, from there, then start off with the initial idea and allow it to develop and develop and develop it. I do try and basically shoot in camera as much as I can, just the same as I would have done in the dark, at the dark room. There will be some post production going on, I guarantee it, whether it's for textures or uh, black and white or kind of sharp sharpening or more blur or whatever it is. But as far as the creative process for me is concerned, I do try and shoot in camera as much as I can, unless it's for a conceptual re reason where I'm joining different elements together. And then I might be on the lookout for certain textures or a background or a door or something silly with that. Uh, they're all the ingredients. You know, I kind of flippantly say something silly. Uh, I'm on about, yeah, yeah, you go in search of a door or a door handle or a, a a paving slab or a graffiti or whatever it would be, you know, you go in search of these things. Um, so as far as the kind of the finished image is concerned, uh, I don't think they're ever finished. You just kind of will revisit them time and time again. I do quite enjoy doing that. Um, but for me, I suppose at my most successful personally, it involves blur. It, so, you know, out of focus in some way or a blur in sub, a subject or something that is very, very, very stylized and sharp. Uh, and, and again, it, it will kind of change as we go through. Um, but if I'm in a bit of a creative down, I will definitely lean back onto what I was on about before was the kind of the life drawing, so the nude, whether it's male or female, to kind of inspire me to actually kind of just shoot something different than I do all the time. Uh, one thing that um, I did when we launched um, the Photographer Academy um, many, 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 almost, a, well, 15 years ago in 2024. Uh, and basically what I did, I kind of almost exhausted um, myself just in a teaching mode, full on filming every day for almost six months. I said, I just need to shoot without being filmed. And then the guy saw what I was shoot shooting and they said, we've, we've got to film it, Mark, whether you like it or not. Um, and, and that was a bit frustrating. So in the same way, you know, you have to have creative time for yourself. You have to develop it. And not everything is going to be good enough to show. Whereas I fully understand, I put myself out there by kind of showing images uh, that I shoot. And, and of course, you take some criticism for them as well. But I think that's the honesty of the shot as well, is there's some things that are never finished, but they need to be kind of there um, to kind of look back on and see how you can improve from and things really. Hopefully all that makes sense. Uh, three, how, how do you choose your show, uh, the subjects or themes for your fine art photography? I think I've just touched on that. Um, as far as if you've got a muse, you don't have to think about a new face all the time. If you've got a particular idea that's different, you will need something kind of um, 
uh, specific. So if you're kind of uh, doing a bowl of fruit on a brown background, it's not just the fruit that you're looking at, but am I going to paint the background? Am I just going to use a pop-up background? What am I going to use as the base? They're all the things that you kind of go through that creative process with trying to choose what you're going to, you know, food photography, exactly the same in a commercial field. You have to have thinking about everything in the shot uh, to, uh, to kind of kind of come up with that idea, uh, I fully applaud um, you know photographers who go out and do the night photography and the kind of the light painting you know in scenes and everything else. I love all that stuff to look at. It's not something per personally that inspires me, even though I've done it. Um, but you've got to find your passion. So choosing the subject is somebody who'll have or something that will have the ingredients of what I need. It, so I usually opt, as far as a subject is concerned, I'll usually opt for a dancer um, before just a model um, because a dancer um, will basically bring something extra for me if I need something extra. That's not saying a model won't, uh, but at times um, you can get a little bit too much of the same look and the same kind of pose. And what a dancer will do is basically give you freedom and expression uh, and they'll let it go. They don't mind the mistakes. The only thing they look at is they look at their body in the photograph and they're very critical of their body in that photograph. And there are times where it's frustrating that between the two of you, you're, you're working towards a specific image. So as far as the theme is concerned, if I need inspiration, I have no problem in looking elsewhere to get ideas. I forget who it was now, but there was a lady, a lady I watched a TED talk with and she talked about bringing the genie to work. And it's this old kind of devil on your shoulder and they whisper in your ear and everything else with it. And she explained it was like she'd written her, her second book and her first book had gone ballistic and kind of had great success and so on. Her second book, I think it was, where she was saying, I've written the book, but I, I need the creative juice in there now. And she sat at a computer or a typewriter, whatever it was, and she looked to a corner of a room and said, OK, I've done this. Now you, my genie needs to come and play. My little devil needs to come and put something in here. And that's what we've got to do. We've got to find that little devil in ourselves to add that extra little bit of something to the Im image. Uh, a, a part of the creative process as well is that if I've got an idea, I'll shoot it, have a break. I forgot to say that before. Have a break, reshoot it, have a break, review reshoot it and kind of keep developing it on and on. So I'm not trying to shoot 20 things in a day. I'd like to shoot two or three things in a day and we'll just repeat it. And as long as your subject knows what you're doing, then they they, they kind of don't think you, you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> I don't know what I am doing uh, because you're in a creative process and you're not supposed to know what you're doing. You're supposed to be working through it. So as long as you're kind of going, OK, look, let's have a quick break and we'll come back and we'll do the same thing again. I want to change the light, uh, the lighting up a little bit. I want to do a quick review and we'll just move on from that. Um, but as far as if I'm looking for models, I'll just go to a purple port or I'll do a shout out on Facebook or something like that with it. Are there specific artists, photographers, or movements that have influenced your work? Uh, if so, how? Uh, yeah, uh, I mentioned two already, in fact. Sam Haskins and uh, Bob Carlos Clark. Uh, Sam Haskins was the first book I was bought, funny enough, by my sister again. And it was um, a pho photograms, so it was kind of photographs that had been multiple printed, blended, and so on in the darkroom. Uh, and that really did me give me a big inspiration at the kind of the 16 and 17 year old Mark Leghorn. Then, as I said, I got bought the um, Bob Collis Clark book, which was basically a, a, a bit of erotic kind of new. Not everybody's taste. I get it, you know, um, but it, it was definitely a massive inspiration for me. I love the world of, you know, fashion and these kind of dynamic images. And, and there was a, a, a calendar kind of growing up called the Pirelli calendar, a bit glamorous in, in, in the world, um, no longer kind of there. But the inspirational images in these things were just amazing. Um, I loved the subject in, land, in landscape. Um, that would obviously revert back to more art than anything else with it. So then we actually kind of go back to what I was on about, like De uh, Degas um, with the dancer on the stage. Um, and, and those are kind of little things. I, I really do like small sub subjects in a big scene. 
um, because it kind of makes them a part of the world instead of the whole world. On the other hand, I, I kind of quite like the dramatic um, element where you're taking the pieces together, you're cutting them out, sticking them on top of each other, um, and basically re-photographing them and then kind of doing it again and adding some texture on top. I'm talking about pre Photoshop, of course. And so today in Photoshop, what I would do in a similar way is work my process through in exactly the same way. So um, Sam Has Haskins, without a doubt, for the kind of the montaging. Then Bob Carlos Clark um, basically did very similar darkroom work, both artists in their own right in the darkroom. Um, but Bob was doing registration printing, so kind of um, having very precise uh, kind of uh, multiple negatives to overlay on the one to kind of print the, the kind of the scene and then another subject in it and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um, that Dark Summer book, without a doubt, really did change change my life. Uh, and uh, uh, lucky enough in my career, got to actually meet Bob uh, and have lunch with him and things really. So that was kind of a real kind of uh, meeting your heroes element. I really did love that. Um, and then... Um, Artists, really, I suppose, um, impressionists, um, without a doubt, um, the likes of Picasso, but probably the biggest artist even today who's influenced me is Andy Warhol. I absolutely love um, his way that he used his photography and the art together and everything else with it. What emotions or messages do you aim to convey through your photographs? Um, passion, movement, dance, expression, love, hate, energy, sweat, tears. I think they've all got to be there. Um, sometimes they show in a photograph, sometimes they don't. Sometimes you try and bring that sweat, you know, into the image, that kind of a ingredient. Um, and I don't mean the dancer's sweat. I'm on about my sweat. I need to work it, but... I'm not trying to impress others. That's that's key. And I know we all put our images out there and people pass comment whether we're asking for them or not. It's different if we put it into a photo, uh, a photo com a competition or portfolio reviews or whatever it is, then we're expecting some kind of feed feedback. Um, but as far as photography, I'd encourage you to do it for you, whether people like it or not. Listen to their comments, um, but take it and see what ingredients of those comments that you can take away and then actually change it. But as far as emotions is concerned, I, I really want to feel that um, the body, because I usually photograph people, as you know, the body is really giving me something. It's really kind of showing a real grit uh, and, and personality even if the subject is is blurred and things, uh, it's very hard to kind of put words on paper um, to kind of really emphasise what we're trying to bring out of each other. But it is a collaboration without a doubt. 